everyone's being paid the living wage. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Although right. Celtic, was, Celtic will still be paying that agency a fee. They just don't know what's going into the actual person's pocket at the end of the day. Well, I mean, without, without naming names, I know a few years ago there was at least two agencies who were paying staff cash in hand and were paying them less than the minimum wage. Yeah. There was at least two of them doing it, and that was only four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have any evidence that that's happening now, but that is quite widespread in the Glasgow industry, and it wouldn't surprise me if Celtic were into it as well. Mm. Um, the other thing is that um, with, with, these, with these staff, the, even the ones that are Celtic's retained staff, they'll probably be on zero-hour contracts, I would suggest. Um, so very few of them, even the ones who are on Celtic's books, would get this living wage. So see when you say a zero-hour contract, Liam, yeah. educate me. Right, basically that means that the company does not have to guarantee you any any amount of work in a given week. All right, you okay. can work 40 hours this week and you can work hee-haw for the next three weeks and you, and you have no legal recompense on that. Right. Um, and it, it also allows... It also allows for bosses to be vindictive. You know, your boss could say, if, if you got offered a shift tomorrow morning, you say, well, sorry, wait a minute, I've arranged to take the kids out to, to Disneyland tomorrow. You yeah. say, well, tough shit, you're not getting any work for the next three weeks then. Mm. You know, they have the power to do that. It's basically indentured slavery. Um, mm. And it's, it's it's total bullshit, but it's, it's one of those things that is really, in the last couple of years, with the Tories doing what they've done to the economy, people becoming more desperate for work. People are willing to swallow this kind of shit, which they wouldn't have 10 years ago, you know? Yeah. Um, Supply and demand at the end of the day as well, to an extent, isn't it? Because, again, to, to, to be, or to play devil's advocate to the whole thing, mm -hmm. if, if they're the terms, then, you know, don't sign up to it. Try and find something else. But I know what you're saying. It's not so easy as that. Sometimes yeah. that's maybe your only option. But at the same time, um, it's a case of, well, if you don't like it, you don't need to, you don't need to sign up to it, you know that kind of thing. Exactly, and and mm. and and the uh, companies like Celtic know that, which is why they continue to abuse staff in that way. Mm. Um, and I guess that, it can be the, certainly the way it's going just now, when attendances are dropping, and I don't know are they averaging out just now. Um, but I mean, even when we look at that game last night, now I, I didn't see the official attendance, but. Let's just take an educated guess because the entire top tier was empty. So let's say it was round about the thirty thousand mark. The the rest of the stadium looked pretty full because mm -hmm. they were packed in. But I don't know. So let's say it was between twenty five and thirty thousand or so. Thirty two thousand, I think, from what right, I remember. Okay. But um, I mean, it's it's half the capacity of the stadium, pretty much. No. But Celtic week to week, just I mean, we 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 probably all still get the emails from even although, and this is something that. I can't, I can't fathom either because I know I'm on their mailing list and things like that, but it doesn't take too much to fathom out if they look at my personal details that I live in Australia. So I actually don't want a ticket or okay. I didn't want a ticket for the upcoming game against Dundee last weekend. You know, that kind of crap that they send you out. But anyway, I mean, you can tell by all these emails we get bombarded with and all the adverts, you know, season ticket holders, buy one, get one free for the St Mirren game and they're desperate to get punters uh, and fans back into the ground, but they're going to have to do a hell of a lot more to attract people going to watch the kind of football we're playing right now um, against the type of opposition we're playing right now to, to fill that stadium again. It's far from happening. So, again, to try to bring it back into what we were talking about there, Celtic, week, week to week, probably just do not have a clue what their requirements are going to be in terms of staffing it. And they will be trying to cut their costs always possible, as as we bloody know they will be. So if they could get away with having less uh, less catering staff on, for example, they're damn, they're damn sure going to do it. The thing is, though, it's such a short-sighted way of doing it. I mean, think about it this way, right? If you go to... I'd just say you go to Burger King or whatever the whatever yeah. it is, right? Hungry to, Jacks. Ah, sorry, Hungry Jacks. That's <laughs> right. right. Anyway, you go into some burger restaurant. Yeah. And um, you see, there's only two staff there, so you have to wait half an hour for your burger. Yeah. You're going to be less inclined to use that restaurant again, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah. Whereas if there's four staff there instead of two, they could have served you in ten minutes instead of thirty. Yeah. And a lot of the customers would have been happy. Yeah, 
and they would have used it again. You know, for the sake of the cost of say an extra tenner, you know, employing two extra staff or whatever, yeah. right? Uh, they've probably cost themselves hundreds of pounds worth of business. Yeah, Celtic are doing that by the thousands every week. Mm. Um, there's, the, I mean, that's the thing. It's like it's so short sighted to think, oh well, if we have too many staff, we're losing money. It's like mm. no, you're not. You're just not making quite as much. Yeah, yeah. I, it really pisses me off in general. I mean, this is a I'm getting into a wider argument here, but with economics in general, you hear like banks saying, oh, we're losing billions. Yeah. Companies saying, like, oh, we're losing. No, you're no. You're just no making as much as you did yeah. last year. Absolutely. You're not losing anything. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Your, your, prop, your profits aren't quite as disgustingly extreme as they were last year. Ah, exactly. Yeah. No, you're right. You're spot on with that. Yeah. You're spot on with that. In fact, you've just reminded me of something there. While we're on that kind of catering subject, I went, uh, well, myself and, and Michelle and, and me and Eve, we went up to see, well, with quite a, with a few more from the Mandara CSE, albeit we went up in a, under our own steam, but um, it was the the international rules game, the Ireland Gaelic football team against the, the best of the AFL, the Aussie oh. rules over here, and it was... Uh, it was played at uh, Patterson Stadium, the Subiaco Oval up in Perth. So we'd um, we went up to see it, and it was a it was a brilliant day. Out. It was really good. They had it was a nice nice sunny warm day, and uh, they had nice entertainment on um, outside the stadium. Um, a good couple of hours before the the actual game started. So you know there was a there was beer I kinda I wouldn't say it's a beer tent, it's it's stalls that are outside the stadium but they're selling beer. Uh we had your Guinness there and uh there was food stalls and there was little kind of fairs and face painting for the kids, bouncy castles. The type of thing you'd see, I guess and I'm sure this this maybe happens at all the games, I'm not so sure, or was it just put on for that one? Because usually I'd just go to a game shortly before kickoff, but we went up nice and early. But when we when we got into the stadium as well, the kiosks, if I if I call them that, um, there were queues at them because obviously there was a lot of plenty of Irish there, quite a lot of Scottish there. Funnily enough, as well, there was quite a few hoops on show, um, and plenty of Aussies. Um, so there were lots and lots of kiosks dotted right round the periphery of the of the stadium. Um, on the kind of concourse area, so there were quite large queues. But one thing that I noticed that I thought that'd be great if you could do this at Celtic Park if they ever go back to selling booze during games again. But it was it was very very simple. It was like a there there was one one particular beer you couldn't buy anything else at this at this kiosk. It was Carlton Mid Beer, which as Pat will know, it's it's not a full strength kind of lager. It's a it's a mid strength. It's not a low alcohol. It's about three percent or something like that. But basically, that, that's all you could get. And there's about four, four. It's there's four different pumps, and all they're doing is is filling these things up, filling them up, filling them up. And it, although it's a big queue, you're flying through the thing because you're basically coming up and saying, "I'll have two. I'll have four. I'll have whatever." I think you can only buy maximum of four anyway. But it's it's just such a quick system. You've got a few people there that are pulling them. A few people are putting them into the little drinks tray things, and then you're you're quickly going up. And I can't remember what it was we were paying for them. Let's say it was eight or nine bucks or something like that. But um, so that's about what I don't know four fifty or something. But that's a material. But it was just it was so quick. There was quite a queue, but you were flying through the thing. You got your drinks and away you go back to your seat. But not just that they had. The catering options, and again, it's it's a long time since I was at Celtic Park and I actually bought some food or a bovro or anything there. But again, from what I remember, it was still very limited and very stereotypical of stuff to get at a, a football stadium in Scotland. There was, you still had, and you, I must admit, you can't beat your pie and bovro, but you'd your pie, your bovro, maybe a sausage roll, you'd maybe have a pizza slice at about a tenner for a wee <laughs> slice of pizza. Maybe a hot dog, but that was other other than that. And you had a bovril, maybe a coffee or a tea, but that was it. That was your catering. Whereas up there, you had 
you had all manner of stuff, you had bloody churros and stuff like that, and I'm thinking, see for the kids and things, okay, it's not the healthiest option, but you had all these churros, which are like the wee dipping donut things, and just loads and loads of different options and variety, and you thought, this, is, this would be so simple to do, to attract, you know, it's, and just if you manage it, if you manage it well enough, then it's, it's another income stream. I know they make a bit of money at it anyway, but the reason a lot of people get put off is because you have to go and you stand there for 15, 20, 30 minutes. You miss half the bloody game or something like that. And at the end of it, you're paying over the odds for some rock hard pie that you need to use your bovril to soak it up a little bit, make it a little bit more moist. But anyway, that was my experience of the international rules. Had a good few beers. Unfortunately, Ireland lost by 10 points, but it was still a good day out. It was almost more as well. They were getting smacked at one stage, weren't they? The first, uh, uh, the end of the first, first half. First quarter, they were getting absolutely pummeled. It was quite... It was looking like a... Uh, it, was, it, was looking, it was looking very bad. But funnily enough, the way the game went, it was very similar to last night's game. Because Ireland did come back. Scored two good goals, actually, Ireland, which was good fun. Needless to say, I was in with the Ireland fans, Patrick and Liam. <laughs> it's, it's weird, Kev, that I was actually supporting the Aussies. No, I don't know enough. why. I don't know why. Yeah, it was just, you know, you know how you kind of like, oh, I don't really care who wins. There's this yeah. part of me, maybe I've, maybe I've turned, mate. Maybe that. Uh, maybe I'm, uh, maybe yeah. I'm, I'm a fair dink of Aussie now, you know. Yeah, a fair dink of Aussie. We need yeah. was supporting Australia, I have to admit. Michelle was straight down the middle. She was 50-50. But I was definitely care. supporting yeah. Ireland. I think it's maybe because there was a couple of St Kilda players playing. I think that's probably the, what the reason was. Nick Re- when I turned it on, Nick Rewald just hit an over, so I was I was quite happy with that. So a couple of uh, all the older sort of St Kilda players. So actually, on a, I don't know if you saw the the draft, Kevin, what I posted on the AFL draft. So St Kilda okay. being the, the shittiest team this year. So we get we get number <laughs> get one the in first, there. They get the first pick of the goodies. Yep, and they picked Patrick McCartan. I'm really happy yeah. to say, so I'm really, really, I'm delighted. St. Patrick's Day, they were calling it. On I, saw, I noticed website. that, actually. So, yeah, I absolutely that. delighted. I think that, I saw so. Clinton's, Clinton had put a tweet out or something, or not, <laughs> maybe not a tweet on his Facebook page or something, I think I saw that. Yeah, Clint's a big St. Killer fan like me, so. Yes. Yep, so it's all happy days, so uh, roll on. So, we've got a lot of, sort of good young players, so we'll be five years away from actually, you know, competing again, Doing but it. that's all right. <laughs> oh, that's just the way, that, well, that's what the draft's all about, you know, it's, um, I guess same way in American sports as well. You know, if you're crap, you get the 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 pick of the young, good young players, and yeah. through time they get better, and all of a sudden the, the team it just it kind of happens in cycles. We had a good spell, we and all of a sudden you know we're, <laughs> we're at the bottom of the ladder again. Do you think about it? Four years ago we were in the grand final and a drawn grand final, which is almost unheard of. Mm-hmm. And you know, four years later we're bottom the floors. We're <laughs> bottom of the ladder, <laughs> but never mind. But this isn't an AFL podcast. The ladder game. for everybody back in Scotland or <laughs> Osaka, oh, Japan, is the league table. That's geez. the ladder. I've been, <laughs> I thought it was a shite here. Russian car. <laughs> <laughs> what's, worse, what's worse than a Skoda in your pants? <laughs> a, a ladder in your tights? Oh, oh dear. That's terrible. Skodas are actually good now. The uh-huh. Skoda I was referring to there was a Skoda Estelle, if you remember them. No. Google them. I do, I do remember Skodas, but <laughs> I was actually chatting to someone the other day. That they, um, the Aussies, had, they had never heard of Ladas. Yeah. And I was, when I was growing up, was, was, there were Ladas and there were y- Yugos. It was Yugos. Uh, it was the other was, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's like, no, never heard of them. They'd kind of vaguely heard of Skodas. Mm. They were the, is it Czech Republic they were from? Was that right? From Jimmy Malk's got a Skoda. He bought a Skoda last week. Owned by Volkswagen, I think. But they are. Right. Oh no, they're good cars, though. The Skodas, they're good cars. But this isn't, this isn't a podcast it. about cars, Kev. Far from it. Uh, this is not a, a podcast about cars. I don't even know how we got onto that there. Anyway, I think we'll uh, we'll start wrapping up. But before we do, Craigie White's been in the news again. Our good old hero, the Prince of Men, Craigie Craigie White. <laughs> the guy's a legend, isn't he? <laughs> So, what's the latest in the Craigie White update here for anybody that doesn't know? He's been, uh, there was something about, he was he was in Mexico and he was getting arrested in Mexico and he's getting extradited back to appear in court. Turned himself in, so fair juice to him, you know. He's in court today. Oh, he's in court today. 